The forest can be a beautiful place. For many, it is associated with relaxing walks or a spot to observe nature. But for professional woods workers, it's just one big open air factory, a place to earn a living, a potentially deadly place for those who ignore the safety rules. Take Charlie here, that's his name. But Charlie's more than just a name. He's a type. You'll find him everywhere. He's a hard worker, no argument about that. And he sweats a lot, sometimes too much. But if you watch him for a while, you'll see that all his efforts don't make him faster or more productive than anyone else. You'll also notice that his whole attitude is one of complete indifference to the safety of both himself and his workmates. That's a Charlie. On the other hand, there's George. No one says that George wears a halo, just a safety helmet that's in serviceable condition, which is more than you can say for Charlie. But then everything of George's is in serviceable condition, from his car to his chainsaw and his protective clothing. He checks everything right down to his chain oiling. It's just an attitude. When Charlie's brushing, for instance, watch the way he goes about it. Look how his saw is nearly out of control. That's from using the tip of the guide bar carelessly and lifting the saw above shoulder height. He's felled hundreds of trees in his time, so he knows how to make a proper undercut. But carelessness makes him sloppy. His top cut is not going to join up accurately with his bottom cut. And now he's even cutting through the hinge, so it's no surprise that the tree goes the wrong way. And although that cracked helmet isn't much use, a cracked skull from falling branches won't improve his performance. The tree hangs up, and he's got a dangerous problem on his hands, but he prefers to solve it the Charlie way. He's using his brawn instead of his brain. His technique is bad, and he can't be bothered to use the right tools designed for the job. Perhaps it is well that he doesn't succeed. Look where that tree would fall. He's obviously not going to get that dangerously hung up tree down either. That's a Charlie. With George, it's different. With him, his head is his most valuable asset. And he not only looks after it, but he uses it. He always uses the right part of his chainsaw. He cuts away from the tip and always holds the saw below shoulder height, so that if he meets the unexpected, when he's brushing, for instance, he can cope with it. He makes sure his working area is clear, that he has an escape route. George sizes up the situation, then makes his cuts carefully. The undercut angles meet accurately and don't overlap. And 
his main cut is made in the correct position, leaving an effective hinge. This will give him full control of the felling direction. Even so, in thinnings, that won't always prevent the tree from hanging up. But George knows how dangerous this tree can be to him or his workmates. So he makes sure it gets down by selecting the right tool and using it safely and efficiently. Notice how he severs his hinge, leaving part as a pivot point, giving him complete control of the takedown. It falls where he wants it to. No problems. No longer a hazard to anyone. But Charlie's hung up tree is. This time, Charlie has assessed the direction of fall. But he's ignored the felled tree in the intended path of fall. This time, his cuts are almost right. That's not going to do his back much good. If he bothered to work it out, he should have known that the butt was liable to kick up because of that tree lying in the fall line. He's lucky this time. He could have gotten his face smashed or been sliced by that moving chain. Bob Evans wasn't so lucky. Charlie's limbing technique leaves a lot to be desired. He's sure to get kickback the way he's stabbing at those branches. And I wonder when he's checked the tension on his chain. Apart from the danger of injury from the chain flying off or kicking, it must be costing him a fortune in chains and guide bars. He's going to need new boots soon, too. But he won't get a new foot if the chain gets any closer. Clearing branches like that is asking for trouble. It's painful just to think of how close those vicious teeth are to his hands. The accident records show that these men weren't so lucky. More than half of all logging injuries are the results of careless chainsaw accidents. These sort of injuries, apart from the pain, will keep a man off work and require medical or hospital care for many weeks. With George, it's a question of correct working techniques. He's applying the lessons he's learned in training. It's not only safer, he gets more work done with less effort. He uses his thigh and the tree trunk to take the weight of the saw. He cuts with the correct side of the saw every time, and he's always on balance. He also knows that it makes sense to have a safety chain break to protect him against the unpredictable. Not so Charlie. There's trouble ahead all the way for him and trouble behind him. Like when he's working in a clear cut area. Look at the height of the stumps he's left for a start. They're like tank traps for anyone working with a vehicle. Well, Charlie can't be all bad. He realizes that when he's working in an open area, if things go wrong, a tree can fall in any direction. So he's cleared an escape route. But can he get his cuts more accurate this time?
Obviously not. That tree is not going to fall where it was planned to, and his chainsaw seems to be more important than his life. He's leaving it too late to even use the escape route. Charlie was just inches from injury. That tree can weigh tons. Joe Smith found out exactly how much. George knows how vital it is to make cuts accurately at all times, but particularly in clear cuts where the chances of injuring or even killing yourself or your workmates are very high. With nothing to break the tree's fall, George gets it right every time. Charlie's still ignoring that hung up tree. Every part of the forest brings its own set of problems, and there are always Charlie's around to make them worse. When nature blew these trees down, she set a trap for the careless or thoughtless cutter. The power coiled in the trunk of this tree packs a lethal punch. So it's all set to demolish Charlie if he doesn't make his cuts right. Cutting a step the wrong way around could turn that chainsaw into a sledgehammer as it's carried away with the sprung half of the trunk. This is what nearly happened to Charlie and did happen to this man. George has made his cuts correctly. He's worked out where the tension is and put his first and second cuts in so that his guide bar is left on the step when the sprung part of the trunk flies away. George won't leave the job half done either. Common sense tells him to get that heavy root plate back to where it came from before it becomes a hazard. The root plate can weigh several tons more than enough to crush someone. Charlie knows this, but he's trusting to luck again. So he hasn't checked to see if anyone is working close by. And the nearby worker should know better than to be standing anywhere near. He's rightly angry about his chainsaw being damaged. Of course, it might have been him. And here's another Charlie special. It's called club yourself and requires ignoring all the rules. This heavy root plate will be hanging over him and should be supported by a winch and cable. George will always find a way, using the tools that are there, or the help that's available from workmates to make sure that dangerous weight is what it should be, on the ground. Bucking logs Charlie's way is yet another hair-raising operation to watch. The same old faults we've seen earlier are there as usual. No protection for his eyes or his ears although the noise is well above the acceptable level. When he starts to go slowly deaf in a few years, he'll wonder why. 
Charlie has some extra hazards as a challenge here. The angle that he feeds that guide bar in is dangerous, and anyone can anticipate the result. With a little bit more thought, he could cope with his work much more safely. He's in a forest, not a circus. So why the balancing act? With that chainsaw running, it's madness. The saw is running at low revs, so if the tip of the guide bar snags on the log behind the one he's cutting, this could happen. And it did to this man and hundreds of others who've suffered very serious injuries from kickback. George knows how to avoid that sort of horror. His working method is systematic. It's both safer and faster. Always the right stance so that he and the chainsaw are balanced. The guide bar goes in at a safe angle every time. And he makes sure the tip is clear of other material. He always uses the right tools to take the sweat out of moving heavy pieces. Even an innocent looking stack of cut logs can be a danger to oneself and others in the forest. If the logs roll, they can cause injuries to body, legs, or feet. Apart from the damage he may do to others with a stack like this, Charlie's probably damaging his back by lifting like that. Back injuries account for thousands of working days lost every year. It's the end of another productive day, and George is going home safe and sound. Not so, Charlie. There always seems to be a little more to do. A little extra thing to go wrong. A dull chain to be sharpened. His tool kit to be found somewhere where he left it somewhere in the forest. forest can be a lonely place, far from friends or medical help. It's no place for a Charlie. Remember when it comes to safety in the woods, there is no better protection than personal care, attention, and respect. For the powerful forces of nature, and for the tremendous cutting power of today's high-speed chainsaws. Next to carelessness, the chief culprit in chainsaw injuries is the sudden backward thrust of the saw in a violent action called kickback. Kickback occurs when cutting chains speeding around the tip of the bar snags up in a piece of wood causing an instantaneous kick reaction. Oregon saw chain has led the development of chainsaw products which are extremely effective in reducing the likelihood of kickback and its severity should it occur. Oregon SuperGuard chain for professional and mid-size saws and Oregon Extra Guard chain for smaller homeowner type saws. The unique non-symmetrical nose Oregon guard tip bar adds even more kickback protection to saws of all sizes. The chainsaw is a highly specialized, incredibly efficient tool that is virtually indispensable in modern forest industry. Handle it with care. Work safely. Equip your saw with quality, low-kick bar and chain. And above all, stay alert. 
the person sewing next to you may be a charlie.